Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. Hey, in this episode, I'm going to kind of break away from Premiere just a little bit. This is significant for Premiere users, but this is also just, just this goes for basically anybody in editing, any editing software and any post production workflow that you're working in. And what I'm talking about is data management, uh, especially if you have a project that's spanning several, uh, several days, several weeks, several months. If you're doing a feature film, if you're doing a short film, uh, data ma management is going to be really, really important uh, to making sure that this project stays organized and that you do not lose files. Uh, one way of doing that is backing uh, projects up. I'm going to talk about that uh, right here and also organizing your media. So first of all, I want to talk about uh, just the very nature of, of working with, with media, with, uh, with digital media assets. And I want to talk about transferring footage from an SD card or a, a solid state drive uh, that you may have shot on with a camera, whether it be uh, just like a regular SD card that you put into like a small Sony camera on up to if you're using uh, a solid state drive on a Blackmagic camera or on a RED camera or on an Alexa camera. Talk a little bit about uh, data management here. Uh, and what some of the mistakes that people make sometimes, uh, and, and just some good habits to get into when you are starting to work with uh, data management. Uh, first of all, I want to kind of treat this here. I'm going to uh, pretend like I'm starting a brand new project here. Uh, let's say I've been shooting on the first day. I'm going to go onto this folder here. I've already got one project folder here. And oftentimes, I've, I've spoken to a DIT recently uh, that kind of went, a professional DIT, and they went over uh, basically their data management workflow with me. And it was similar to how I was doing things, but there were just some little things that I did not pick up on, because I am not a DIT, uh, but I, as an editor, oftentimes I'm I'm kind of tasked with the with the charge of organizing media, especially if it's on a small on a short film. But when it comes to larger films, and there are many shoot days, uh, there's some very important things that people use. They use what's called uh, basically a checksum software to make sure that all the back all the backups are consistent. They use what's typically what's called an MD5 uh, method, which is a way of authenticating footage, making sure that when you've copied it over, making sure the files are exactly the same, making sure that they are the exact same size. Check some software is oftentimes very, very detailed in making sure that if, say, you've got, well, like right here, I've got a project that we've been working on. Let's say this is one location where all the footage is being dumped, and then this is the location where it's being backed up to. And right now, I've only got day one and day two folders. These are two different production days. So if I were to run the check some software, or if you use a sync and copy software, which is similar, it's going to read the folder. Say this is the original folder, and we've got all the media in here, and you're backing it up to this folder, but we've already backed up two days into this folder, and we don't want to spend the time of deleting this and recopying everything over, which will take forever. So let's say we've dumped day three and four into this new folder and we want it to be synced to this folder right here. Uh, but before we get into that, let's talk about copying over from SD cards to the folder, to the production folder location. So I'm going to make a new project location here. I'm going to go new folder and we're going to call this Happy Movie Production. So that is the name of the movie that I'm working on. It's called Happy Movie. Now we're going to go in and, and we're going to start dumping files in here. So let's say I'm going to go into that folder right there. And one thing to note is like these underscores under the name. Uh, if you have a professional DIT working, they're never, you don't, we don't, I don't do this on short films usually. In fact, when I work on short films, they oftentimes look kind of like this. They'll just be check now or death of me or uh, Q -Q QTTM production, just like that. These are regular hard drives. These are XFAT hard drives. So I can get away with doing spaces in between. But if you want it kind of the universal format that's going to be working with different types of uh, hard drive formats or Linux, you need to have it like underscored here and it doesn't like the spaces. Sometimes uh, footage can get corrupted if you don't have these underscores, if it's not all one name and using the underscores as the spaces. So if this is on a big feature project where they've hired a professional DAT, this is the naming convention that you will see here with the underscores and no spaces. So let's go into here. I'm going to make a new folder. And right now, I'm, I will get into the naming convention later. Right now, I'm just going to go with simple naming conventions to say day one with a space, no underscores, but we will get into that later when we get into organizing media here. I just want to kind of show uh, how you copy cards over. So day one, let's say we've got uh, one card. I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to go onto, let's say we shoot, we go through two cards on a camera. They call them rolls in film. It's, if it's digital film production and they're not actually use, using actual rolls of film, they still call the cards roll. So roll one. So this is where I'm going to dump my roll one. Now I'm going to go up here and let's pretend like this is a card right here. I plug the card in, the card pops up, and now this is on a red camera. What a lot of people, I'm going to show you two different instances here of, uh, of what people will usually do. 
here. Oftentimes when they see folders, uh, the, the, the temptation is to go inside the folder, find the footage and start and find the actual media clips and just copy and paste those over. I'm going to tell you, don't do that. Uh, here's the whole card. You will want to do this. You'll want to just hit everything. You'll want to do, this is on a Macintosh, so Command-A, it'd be Control-A on a PC, and you want to do copy. You're going to you're gonna copy the entire card and paste it over to Roll 1. This is my Roll 1, the very first card that I shot in, and I'm going to paste everything into Roll 1. So I'm going to paste, and it's going to paste that whole thing. Another temptation here that people want to do is they want to go in before they transfer, or even after they've transferred, and start renaming these files. So two general rules. Copy the entire contents of the card over, and the second rule, don't rename the files. You do that in Premiere. You don't rename them on your hard drive. You do not name them on the SD card. You just copy and paste them over, and that is card one. That's the way it was shot, because oftentimes this will have a very specific naming structure. Uh, in fact, right up here, this is uh, this is a RED camera, so it shoots in FAT32 still, unfortunately. So it builds a clip up to four gigabytes, then continues onto another clip, then onto another clip. And this, all, collectively, these are all, all three of these clips are technically one clip all put into this folder right here. So here's our naming convention right here. First of all, with the red camera, this is and this is very uh, typical for a lot of camera for a lot of professional cameras where you're using a Blackmagic camera or an Alexa camera. But this here, A001, stands for A camera, and then this is the card number. 001 is the card number. This is card number or roll number one. And then over here has C001, that is your clip number 001. And then it has kind of this randomized uh, number over here that it keeps generating all these randomized numbers. If you have another card one uh, later on, it's not going to have the same naming convention and you won't un unintentionally reconnect the wrong footage with, with the wrong clips. So my two general rules, I'm going to re restate this. When you open up the card, if this is the card right here, you grab everything that's on it because you've got metadata in these files here that are going to be very important to post-production. Oftentimes it tells you what I ISO, uh, what ISO, what shutter speed, what f-stop was used on a specific shot. You do not want to get rid of any of this media. And if you just copy over these little folders and you rename them, it's going to screw it up. And actually, red media will not work if you do that. So you just grab the whole darn card. Sorry for my curse word, but I just want to emphasize that. And you copy and paste it over to your roll one uh, location. Let me show another thing here. Let's go to a, let's go to a different type of media here. I'm going to go to a Sony camera here. All right, I just stuck an SD card in here. Oftentimes, if you shoot on something like a Sony camera uh, and you load the card, and it shows up as untitled. You can change that in the camera if you want to, but if, just by default, it shows up as untitled. Uh, but then in here, we got three folders. We've got this MP, MP root folder, the private folder. And if you go through these, if you dig through these, some people will dig through them and just find the clips that they need. They're the clips that were shot right there, and they'll just copy and paste it over. It does have this XML, which contains, like I said, ISO, shutter speed information. So some people just so tempted to grab this media, transfer it over, call it good. And that's okay for some smaller projects, but for, for larger projects and just getting used to the way it's done by a DIT, a uh, digital imaging technician, the, uh, what they would do here is they'd have all those folders collapsed, and these are actually still photos right here, uh, is oftentimes they will just grab the whole card. This is called, we're going to just call this roll two here. So we'll say this was shot on roll two and it was a different camera. Oops, roll two and we'll say this is a different camera. Uh, so once again, I click on the actual SD card there. This is everything on it. Watch this, instead of digging through it, you just do Command A, select everything, Command C to copy, or Control C, if you're on a PC, it's command, Control C and Control V, all that stuff. But now we're gonna go into Roll 2 here, I'm gonna do Command V and paste it. So we paste the whole card, I select everything, I copy and paste it into Roll 2 and everything is now in that folder, all the media, because sometimes there might be a different format, and sometimes if it's in a different format, they will, it will put it in a different folder, in a different type of folder. If it's shot in H.264 versus MOV, there's a bunch of, it'll, it'll sometimes, have, it'll has, it has its own little organization here. So like I said, just grab everything on the card, copy and paste it into the roll, into whatever roll number that was on that on that camera, and now you have all that media there. And, uh, and now you can import this into your editing software. So let's open up Premiere, and we're gonna import this into the software. And I've opened up Premiere here, and I like when I'm organizing media, I go into the assembly mode, it's a little drop down here, and go into assembly mode, so you get kind of this three window format that gives you a lot of space over here. I've got an episode coming up where it's just going to be specifically on importing media into Premiere, but I'm going to hit Command-I to import. I'm going to go to my Happy Movie production here. 
go to day one, and then I'm going to go into roll two here. I'm just going to, rather than go to roll two and try to dig through the folders and find it, what Premiere does, it's pretty smart, a lot of editing software will do this, is I'm just going to select the general folder right there and say import. It's going to dig through the that folder now and find all the media that it can use. It'll oftentimes give you an error message saying, hey, there's stuff in here, I don't know what it is. A lot of those are like the metadata files and uh, the, the text files. I'm just going to hit OK and arrow down, it will show the folder locations of where it found media. Now this is a bunch of photos right here, so I don't need photos. If I'm the video editor, I don't need the photos. I can delete that out of Premiere. It did not delete it off the hard drive, but now I go into the M4 root, uh, the clip, and there's the media that I need, Th thumbnails, and there's some JPEGs I don't need. It did thumbnails of each one of these shots, so I can just basically delete that, grab this footage, move it, move it outside my folder, and now I can delete this folder here, and now I've got my media imported, and I can organize it as my editing in my editing software here. Uh, if you want to, now this is another thing, very, very important. Do not rename the files that are on the hard drive, especially if you're in the middle of a production and you go through and start renaming things, that can really screw things up, especially when people are, are using the, basically the raw media with the original names here. If you want to change them, I will get into this in a future tutorial, but you can just hit select the file, hit return, and say this is scene one, take one. You can just type in the new name, hit enter, and I've renamed the clip. Let's say this is scene one take two. I'm just hitting return or enter there to rename it. When you got a clip selected, you hit enter or return and type in the new name. You just hit enter or return, enter or return, and then you just type in the new name that you want. Now this has changed the name of the software, but this still, uh, still is referencing the source name. If I right click on one of these files here and I say reveal in finder, It'll pop up in the Finder or Reveal in Explorer if it's on a Windows, and there is the file right there. This is not, this is named C0002 MP4, and it, but in the software, it's got a completely different name. The software will treat it this name with a new name, but then it is remembering what the original source is. And if you move this to a different software, if you round trip this to a different uh, piece of software like DaVinci Resolve or do color grading, it'll understand that this is the name in editing, but then it knows that it has to reference the original source name to reconnect it to the footage when you send it over to Resolve. So once again, do not rename the files on the folder. Do not rearrange them. Do not change the organization of that card. Just copy and paste the full card over, import it, and then rename it within the software. I can't say how that important that is. It's not as important on a, on a short film project. If you're kind of doing all the editing and you're familiar with your own process, that's cool. But this is the way it's done mostly in the industry. And it's, and, I've, we, and I've, I've known people that have screwed things up by going through and changing the names, especially of Red Media. When they do that, they're getting into, uh, if they change the original source name, you're getting into a big danger zone there. And in some instances, when the people have renamed Red Footage, they've had to just go back and reshoot because they can't remember what the original name was. Unless you knew the original name of all the files that you changed, uh, then, then you're pretty much screwed yourself over. All right, enough preaching.